Now, whether you're relatively new to the soothing sounds or you're a seasoned listener to the term Selfagio frequencies, this might be entirely new to you. Well, Selfagio frequencies refer to a spe specific tones of sound that help with the promote the various aspects of body and mind health. These frequencies are reputed to date back to ancient history and are said to be fundamental sounds used both in Western Christianity and Eastern Indian religions, chanted by the Georgian monks and in ancient Indian Sanskrit chants. So, we looked and we found that physician and researcher, Dr. Joseph Paluo, discovered self edgeo frequencies in the 1970s, bringing their benefits back into the public awareness. In his research, he used mathematic, mathematical numeral reduction to identify six measurable tones that bring the body back into balance and to aid healing. These self edgeo frequencies were believed to profoundly affect the conscious and the subconscious mind in order to stimulate healing and promote vitality. So, thanks to Palelo's work and the renewed interest, many scientists have since unearthed more evidence supporting the positive effects of these amazing frequencies that they have on the human body. So, with all this in mind, what better person to have on the podcast today is the self edgeo queen herself, oh, Elise. Nice Welcome, so Elise. Hiya. Hi, Kate. Are you okay? Yeah, I've never been called the self edgeo queen before, but I quite like it. That sounds quite well. Do, I, I do like to make, make uh, the podcast of the day the center of attention, and you deserve it oh. um, because you know you are you are a star, and yeah. and I know that. This frequency, this self edgeo music is so passionate to you. You absolutely adore it. You love it. It's your life. So I hope I've done your service with that introduction. You did. You did. The um, only thing is, um, I think you said, uh, you didn't say Gregorian. So Gregor Gr Gregorian. So it's actually, you know, like um, where you have like the Renais Renaissance period or yes. the Barak period. I think it was a period of time, the Gregorian where this time um hundreds of years ago um was in the churches right. and this is where the monks would chant and they would do the uh, do re mi fa so la ti do Amazing. which went on to and that's all to do with the solfeggio so it's a scale basically and this is why you're the queen elise you know I'm, we're trying we're, yeah. we're trying to bring the uh the listeners a little bit of information but Absolutely. ultimately you you live your life by this now this is you know your direction before we start i need to give a big shout out to how this platform is even possible and that is predominantly by you the listeners who not just tune in each episode but you take the action in your own lives and purchase things like our transformative online manifestation course and the supporting Create Your Dreams journal. It's by you, the subscribers, purchasing the wonderful products that we promote, from the likes of Masterpiece, your heavy metal detox supplement, to Strong Life for all your premium health products. And of course, Natural Shilajit. Absolutely. Um, so I wouldn't do any anything else, you know, um, for the people listening out there and watching this, you know, generally all around the world, music is in the frequency um, of the key of A, um, which is on a keyboard and it's in 440 Hertz vibration. Now that wouldn't mean much to many people, but what it does mean is that 440 is a frequency. So it, are, um, it goes round, if you imagine a circle, it's the speed, of which the song goes around. So 440 would be 440 seconds per minute. Um, right, okay. so, so when I started to look into it, 440, all on the internet, this was about 12 years ago now, it was stated that 440 can create boxed in thinking. 
and that we all think the same. So you look like, wow, it's something else. So when I started experimenting with 432 and other frequencies, I was mind blown with what I discovered, what I came across. It was great. That is, that's amazing. And you've just, and you've just, you've just made me think of something there, Elise, because um, mm -hmm. I'm one of these guys who I sort of have a, a wealth of knowledge in my head, which I like to call useless rubbish. Right, because yeah. I never get to use it, and my partner always says, "When are you going to use that?" Right, but today I've got a couple of things I'm going to throw at you because I think I could use hey. some of this knowledge. <laughs> so Great. I know back in the I think it was as far back as the 17 or 1800s, mm -hmm. people people in power, if you like, they knew that these frequencies had an effect on people, mm -hmm. and. Um, I forget the name of the person, I'll, and I'll grab it up after. But it was someone high up in parliament or government and things okay. like this. Mm -hmm. And what he realised was, he said he's going to change the frequency what mm -hmm. people are hearing. Mm -hmm. He said because um, something to do with only by a small adjustment, it closes mm -hmm. the left hand side of the brain, the creative feminine side. Mm -hmm. And what he actually said in parliament was, we want a nation of workers not a nation of thinkers that will so be purposely with, altered yes recently. was that rockefeller or you is it rockefeller I, I, while we're talking i'll try and dig, yeah, dig, but, dig it up well, but, the um, Rock, Rock, rockefeller institution um have um had um dealings as far as i know because you've got the tavistock institute in london and that was mainly um created as i know um for this type of thing so it was to find out really how the masses were influenced by frequencies and of course that's why you know um the manufactured bands like the beatles and you know there's many thousands and millions of people who love the beatles and i do too but yeah. to find out you know and it's not just those there's many many acts as well like the rolling stones um, and also many others um that were created specifically to to change the vibration of the the frequency of the planet that's what i believe anyway and but i know some people like you know when things are happening in the world and people say um oh but i'm an in you know what can i do about it i'm an in you know but the thing is when you know this information or it becomes into your into your persona yeah that is quite frightening to think that people have purposely tried to close down parts of your brain from working the way they should do mm -hmm. um and i'll throw something else at you now this, and this will be the last one when i throw at you because i want <laughs> but because i did a little bit of looking into this as well is so apparently um the birds chirp around four o'clock in the morning yeah. and scientists wanted to know why and what they found was and i'm going back many years but what they found was underneath the plants on a strawberry plant is a thing called stigmata and what happens is when the birds are chirping, the plant opens up so the birds can eat the seeds, right? So na isn't nature amazing, right? Yeah. But they went a little step further. So what they did was they realized the sound of the chirping birds was the same frequency as like Mozart and um, that type of classical mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. Or in fact, that's why classical music you know, because because it's the same the same um, sound wave. vibration or sound yeah. wave or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, I just, and again, so again, and then the, what they did was they took it a bit further. So mm -hmm. they took these um, Mozart and these classical sounds, and they took them out to the farmers' fields in in Ohio in America, and they played them to the to the fields, and the crop grew. Yeah. And it grew out of it was it was just unbelievable the the produce what was coming off it. Now again, this is evidence. This is facts. Mm -hmm. Now the thing is, this is hidden from people because I just find that amazing. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, the um, evidence from Dr. Emoto, the Japanese um, right. guy, who sadly passed. Actually, I was hoping to see him That's in it. London. Yeah, a few years ago. I think his son runs it now. Um, right, his, okay. his business, um, but um it was maybe 2019 that i was going to go to london 
to uh, 2020, maybe early, um, to see Dr. Emoto because he'd come to London. And I was like, wow, you know, I've been studying this frequency with vibration for a, for a while now, for 12 years or more. And so, um, but unfortunately, um, he got he got ill and passed. Um, so he never came to London. Um, but he's done lots of research and he calls it water crystals. Um, so where you put something of a frequency of say 440 or 432, yeah. one of either put in water put that vibration on it put it in the freezer freeze it as a water crystal and the shape of the water crystal when it came out would be just amazing so 432 being a universal energy okay. um you know to balance and harmonize really just come out with like a beautiful perfect uh figure and when, and when you think humans are 70 80 percent i think it is water and and everything is water. I know it affects us, right? Vibration. What me? And yeah, even the you'll, you'll be the same. But yeah, it affects us. You're so right. You're so okay. right. You, you, I mean, you'll be the same as me. What baffles me is why so many people on planet Earth, if you like, are just they don't seem bothered. They just they just accept like what's happening to them. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I un I understand what you're saying, but I think if I'm honest, um, a lot of people are very distracted you know yes yeah i agree with that number of things and just just having to survive majority of people on the planet are having to survive in what i would call and if we want to go larger on this and, and expand it on the frequency on the planet that is very dense or has been very dense in energy right. so it's been a really low vibration um that's been my thoughts on it um yeah. many years ago i met someone who um kind of saved me really i was going through a really tough time um so i'm going back to 2004 2005 and um, had you know a really tough time in my life um things had broken down i was in a job that i wasn't enjoying i wasn't doing my creativity so i was very miserable and a friend of the family um i I just called out to God, really. Um, I'm, I'm not religious by any means, but I do believe there's an energy or a source of a higher energy yes. of the most 100%. loving God. Yeah, that's, the, you know, whether it's creator, um, source, whatever you want to call it. And so I just reached out in my mind and I was like, just show me where I need to go. I was desperate for answers. And um, I thought, oh, I'll go and, because um, I'm from Manchester, I live in, in Manchester, you'll probably tell yeah. with my accent. Um, <laughs> and Cr Christie's Hospital is not far from here. So I wanted okay. to, um, I thought, well, I'll go and volunteer. I'll give my time, you know, don't have any children still to this day, don't have children, but I've got this time on my hands. If I give, then I may feel better about life and my circumstances. Wow. And lovely. anyway, it was amazing experience. I met this friend of the a friend of a friend who worked he worked in Christie's at the time um he was like a volunteer and I met with him in the cafe bar in 2007 and it completely changed my life around because it turns out that he was um he's a bit psychic he never used to be right. okay and he was a medium and for six months basically I would go around to his house with coke a packet of coconut macaroons and we'd sit and drink cups of tea and he would teach me and about certain things really about life okay. about the planet because I'm very deep like that so it would make sense Kev that I am kind of like one of the first guardians I suppose of changing pop music dance music that has been tuned to 440 and completely um you know putting it into a healing frequency you know i'm the person for the for the job i know that that's that's my big mission is to I'm getting goosebumps all over but yeah so going back to this situation was i i really got to gra grasp with the 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 knowledge that and the feeling and the knowing that this earth plane is very, very dense in energy. Don't underestimate that. Every soul that has come to this planet is brave, is a brave soul. Right. It's a brave soul. You probably know this already because I know that you are tuned in. Well, I try to be, but I'm, <laughs> you know how difficult it is, you know, you're, you're both. Yeah. Um, is the energy I, I mean, and I love, mm -hmm. I love hearing from other people who know this kind of information because it mm -hmm. does fill you with a bit more. Hope. Well, I'm on the right path. I'm yeah. on the right track. You yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but 
what I, what I want to do at least, because we're yeah. going to delve well into this self edgeo, but I just want to pull you back because I believe mm-hmm. you have your latest album. Mm. That is, uh, has it been released or is it about to be released? Is it called yeah. Feel the Love? It's called Feel the Love. It's been through a real transition of names, by the way, and it's a long backstory. But yeah, I decided on Feel the Love and it's the second track of the album. So the album will be nine tracks, very same situation as my first album, which is called The Love Energy. And what I do with that, I take an album of nine tracks, make sure it's nine. It's just a really good figure for me, number for me. And I have a really great producer engineer who kindly mixes it for me and masters it and tunes it into the nine solfeggio frequencies. Well, so when you're singing the song, Mm-hmm. So in the recording studio after, is that where the self edgeo gets incorporated into the music, or is it in um, your, is it in your actual voice? Is it something to do with the actual voice or tone as well, or? Um, not really. I set the intention. I do yeah. have the thought when I'm when I'm with the microphone in the studio booth. Yeah. I am, I imagine, and I've never really shared this, but I'm fine sharing it. I imagine a globe. I imagine the, the world, the planet. Going back to what I just said before about there being density on the planet. My mission is to raise the frequency of the planet um, to a higher vibration with positive music. So in the studio booth, I will imagine a globe around the microphone and I'll set good intentions for it really to reach who it needs to reach to. So it's quite magical, really, because going back to what we were talking about before with the Tavistock Institute and being manufactured and um, testing the masses to see how music and frequency would affect people. They've been doing this for years, this magic. Right. They've been putting right. it into, into music to put subliminal messages in the background. You know, it's very, very powerful. Don't underestimate the power of music. And what's no, happening. and we've got, um, obviously, we, we know uh, Mark Devlin, who does a lot of talking it's about, great. you know, that Love kind Mark. of thing. So big shout out to Mark. Yeah, And absolutely. also, I don't know if you've noticed this. So and I know when I had my awakening 15 years ago, you know, I didn't realize how much people wasn't ready for certain conversations back then. I thought there was, but there wasn't, obviously. Yeah. But do you feel now the audience is is sort of getting bigger or opening up to people? And I'll tell you why I asked this as well, because recently on the um, Dragon's Den, we had we know Liam Brown as well. He, he does the wonderful cacao, and every, and I was a little unsure how all that was going to go down. You know, with with it was because at one point he said, "What I do is I do a ceremony and I Bless like it. you're talking about the glow when you're singing, yeah. you know." And I thought, "Oh, I don't know if Peter Jones is really going to, you know, <laughs> buy into all that." Yeah. And he yeah. had the um, he had mm. Steve Bartlett at the Diary of the CEO, whose partner was well into it. But what really got me when I was really chuffed about was the fact they got it. They they when he when he said I'm mm-hmm. I'm praying and I'm and I'm asking the universe. The they timing's right, Kev. The timing's right because I saw Liam just recently at Stockport MBS, and I just said to him, "You were the right person for the job to open that door to let yeah. people like me go through." You know, he was he was ripe for the job, and I've known Liam. Um, I think like 10 or 12, 12 years, maybe, maybe. Yeah. And I knew when I met him, he, he was he was different. He was special. And he, he's, he's got a good energy. Great. And what, what, and you'll, you, you can understand this. And I know I can as well. The bit that people are seeing now with like sort of Liam Brown, the dealer to healer and the, and things are taking off, mm-hmm. but they're only seeing the tip of the pyramid, the tip of the iceberg. Mm-hmm. They're not seeing the 12 years mm-hmm. of, oh. of him everything he's gone through, his story, and yeah. you'll be the same. It's like yeah. the timing is right now, but you've you've had to battle through it all. And I have. I've wanted to give up a few times, which would be completely normal and natural. I but, so. you know, the, the product is, is that I've got an amazing album, first album, called The Love Energy. And this album was um, released in 2015, Right. It was. Tr- I tried to release it in 2013, 2014, but it was the the circumstances around me at the time. Um, people, certain people getting ill, like my ju- producer at the time and stuff. You know, um, their sort of family members, and it got left a bit. But it was yeah. all meant to be. And the same things kind of happened with this second album. Right. Um, it's got delayed again, but I trust that the timing's perfect. So, um, yeah. how strange is check this out? So this was released 
on May the 21st, 2015. Okay. Yeah. Mine and David's wedding anniversary, 25th of May. And okay. guess what I'm going to do this year? Nine years Are you, you going to release it on the same day? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's I'm lovely. The second album on that day. Feels very significant for me. Yeah. Um, but what I am going to do is build up the album. I think I would j- do it, it myself in justice if I just released an album. I'm yes. learning the back end. I'm learning the marketing, the online. It's a different world to what we had 20, yeah. 20 years ago. It's so yeah. advanced. It's so technical. And people, you know, they easily get distracted and they're going to just flick through, you know, on the on the little wheel, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, they, you know, they're going to miss it. So I need to... I need to know how to do that um, properly. So what I'm going to do is release two or three singles off the album with the build up to the album. And I've done a really nice thing and I'm so pleased with myself. I got in touch with some local music colleges in Manchester and I'm auditioning or interviewing next week with the careers manager of a big music college um, for a student or two to help me with social media. And that's a double thing where I get help as well. Yeah. Being the age that I am, and also the young students or students also tick off their module. So it's a win win. It's that only for eight, eight or 12 weeks, and it's a thing that I've created. Nobody's yeah. approached me and said so. I needed a bit of help, really, on the social. No, but that's fantastic. But when you talk about the timing, <clears throat> but obviously, like, I know, like, sort of back in 2008, 2009, sort of before the internet is as like it is now. Yeah. But because the timing now when you release these tracks and this, you can reach the world now, mm-hmm. literally within, oh, you know, within an hour. It, it, so, and so right. I, don't, I don't know if you've noticed this. So we know as well, a lot of subjects are picked up a lot more in um, uh, America, Scandinavia, um, Australia. Yeah. And I think the UK is a little bit behind in some of the, the it, trends. Kind of always has been. When I was 18, I was an au pair in America. Right. Um, for the Gerber family, lovely family. And even when I was in America when I was 18, so 1989, I didn't want to come home. Everything was bigger. Everything was just so advanced. And it seems to be, I don't know how correct this is, but we seem to be about three years behind. I don't know why that is. But a right. lot of my fan base predominantly are in America. When I go on my dashboard, like and Spotify yeah. and Apple iTunes and all that business, America, America is massive. So yeah. I know that the the you know the world's getting ready for this, but America seems to be at the forefront. And um, something me and my husband David would love to do. We'd like to go to America for work because I know yeah. my husband's work and stuff would be great there. Um, yeah, it would be awesome. Love it. Amazing. Just so blessed. <laughs> so I just want to quickly pull you back, Elise, as well, because I noticed on social media myself, and I was intrigued. You've actually just released a course that's all to do with self edio where other is it so students can learn it and become yeah. practitioners of it or can you tell us a little bit more about the course that you've released yeah the course is to help people um, gain knowledge and experience for themselves the nine self edio frequencies and 432 and um also 111 2999 um there's also um modules on each of the nine solfeggio so module one will be on 174 hertz and it tells you all about that how to use it um so there's like uh, 50 odd videos of me to camera over the last couple of years what i have found is if you close your eyes and you're listening to certain tones and i've listened to some of your solfeggio and i've also listened to a bit of um binaural beats yeah they're great and that, mm-hmm. you can feel something happening in your body Mm-hmm. You it, you can feel just like de-stressing, de-relaxing, just, and and I believe it can heal you. And yeah. Do you know what? And so, all my life, if you like, everything's like looking, pushing fast, fast, fast. And, and now I'm at a stage where I just want to relax, and I want to take in all this knowledge and this information from the likes of yourself, what we're learning, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna implement this into my life. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, that's oh, yeah. Fun. Yeah. So were you talk you were talking before about us being predominantly eighty percent water, um, because the figures change, don't they? You can be seventy five percent, eighty percent, eighty five percent water. <laughs> we are a lot of water. A lot of so, water. Yeah. So when you're working with these diff- I call them digital healing tones, um, because I don't think um I can really call them frequencies if I'm honest. You've got to be really careful because um, there's people out there who do sound healing, for example. They play the the beautiful bowls, the gongs, yes. 
the fork tuning, you know, how can I basically um, come along, which I have done and said, oh, here we go. Here's the digital, you know, is it going to sound exactly the same? Probably not because it's been compromised because it's digital. So I'm aware of that. And this is probably, and I know I'm saying probably, I know this has taken me some time to get it out there and to be more visible from my own point of view is because I wanted to really make sure, you know, with the evidence that I've collated over the last 12 years, they do work, you know, 100%. And and yeah. the going back to the online course, Kev, it's basically um, full of audios. It's full of guided meditations. Uh, every month, I release a Zoom monthly call. Um, I've just started to do interviews with people who, um, like January, I interviewed someone who knows a lot about symbols in churches and how they wow. affect our frequency. So that was January. Um, yeah. This month, the end of February, is all about like the cosmic and astrology. And then for March. Um, the rest of the year I'm I'm finding frequencies all the time I'm so surprised because I'm like I know about the nine cell fed Joe I know about 432 I know now about 111 to 999 which I I call angel frequencies which are amazing by the way Um, I've also put into the course 110 hertz vibration which is very interesting 110 hertz has been proven to be found in uh, Malta in the uh, tombs there Um, it's a healing frequency and it's also been found in um, the Grange, New New Grange in Ireland which is old um, historical architectural site um, which um, people would go to to heal. And 110 hertz is in one of the domes there. You couldn't make this thing up, do you know? No. So I've studied one, 110. I studied recently uh, 295.8. <laughs> yeah. so it's, just, it's just brought to me, you know? And 295.8 hertz is all about... Um, you know, the weight um, and the body. um, And I'm like, okay, so I did a week course, a week like challenge on 295.8. Now what 295.8 tone did for me, I was listening to it all every day as an experiment for seven days. Um, I just got my eating right. I don't know. I can't say it was miraculous. Like, you know, it was, oh my God, you know, I lost 10 pounds or whatever. Um, But it kind of just like, I don't know if it's because of these, the intention or whatever um and now for this year i'm going to do planet frequencies thing is elise right we talk about like obviously you've got 12 15 years in the making or of all this knowledge that you mm-hmm. now have mm-hmm. now obviously over those years when you've been gaining all that knowledge and obviously you have to mm-hmm. go through all them difficulties but we talk about the timings right yeah and people are going to be open look, looking looking for answers looking for direction yeah. And then you've got all this knowledge. Now, whether that's in the course, whether that's meeting you directly, listening to your music, that that's what people want today as well. They don't want the 12 years of doing what you've had to go through. They just want it, want it. Yeah. But, and mm-hmm. and that's why for really people like yourself are going to be the teachers of tomorrow or the teachers of today. Yeah. Because yeah. You've, had to, you've had to go through all that learning and that pain, if you like. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah. What I want to mention as well, because obviously I know from a science point of view, the the universe, the Big Bang and everything else, so Mm -hmm. there's actually a hum of the, the, well, they call it the God frequency, I think. Mm -hmm. And is is that around about 432 or something like that, do you know? Yeah, they they do say that 432 hertz is um, a universal planetary frequency and it's it's the planet of balance and wholeness kind of thing. So me personally, um, I love 432 because all my singles, my music right. my singles are in 432. So if you ever see I release a single, it's in 432. When I'm releasing albums, it's in the Nine Soul Fed show. When people are looking for this knowledge and information, what I've come across over the last few, six months <laughs> or more when I've been looking is just how much especially when we go back to the Roman times and probably mm. before, how much we've been lied to about everything. Mm. Everything from the, the calendar, your dates, your frequency. It's, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's almost like the earth at the moment is saying, I've had enough of the, the lies. I've it's had crazy. enough. 
yeah, it's almost it's shaking everybody back on onto yeah. the main frequency. And if people are not prepared to get in line, that's where I think they're struggling with this imbalance. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know these kind of frequencies can help balance people, get them back on track. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to show you the Solfeggio album that I have. Can you see um, yes. the diagram there? Basically, the Vitruvian man, when he does that symbol with two arms in the air and his legs and stuff open in that shape yeah. it's known that it's the balance and wholeness of man or women in my or woman in my yeah. case so it what's happening is you can see the nine solfeggio frequencies one seven four two eight five three nine six all the way around to nine six three they balance through the wholeness of man so that's what i i believe and i've discovered that these frequencies fit over that diagram wow. basically so um yeah and you, you learn Amazing. all about that in the online course as well, all about Vitruvian Man, the history of music. Um, you learn about emotions and different maps. You know, um, there were studies done in Sweden many years ago on people and what state they were in, like a fear energy or a love energy. And yeah. their bodies were actually um, showing different colours in different parts of the bodies. So they had to fill in some kind of test or something. And the yeah. evidence showed that when you're in this love vibration, it's a different colour to then when you are in the fear, fear vibration. So, yeah. you know, emotions are just going off the subjects of what we were talking about, emotions are massive in terms of this, I believe, you know, coming to this planet, this dense oh, yeah. energy planet, which is now yeah. changing um, energetically, is that emotionally, you know, we're clearing some stuff. We are clearing some stuff. And if you're not, <laughs> then you must be like really suffering yeah. because, or just choosing not to, and then that's fine. Yeah. But for me, on an emotional level, you know, I when you talk to before about suffering and kind of pain and doing it's the emotions because if we if we haven't dealt with those emotions that are suppressed in the body then you could have a really hard time so i, I just want to ask you why i've got you here um as someone who's experienced the um the music industry and i've do you know what i've purposely kept away from it because for those who don't know obviously elise was a 90s it was it 90s 80s yeah. 90s 90s <laughs> a music star you know but the, but the thing is you, your life is in a completely different thing now with this energy and the self edgio and i think that's what's important mm-hmm. um but you are the perfect person to ask as well um somebody who's experienced the music industry from a different perspective could you tell us how the, ev- the you know the evolution of sound and the message that you know as, as it changed over the years of, of and what's your feelings on all that? So from the 90s, being famous pop star in the 90s with the group Max, that's M-A-X-X, um, we had two top 10 hits. I think massively music has evolved and changed and continues to do so because people are being aware not only of the frequencies, which we're talking about today, but also yeah. because of the lyrics and the music and and the words that's what i mean to yes. say not so much the music it matters a lot um but the lyrics for me are huge because when you are it's like a spell isn't it spelling when yes. you're using words in anything that you do and say and be and write then to to put those into a song for me i learned in 2011 how important that was massively important because I was shown that there would be this love energy filtering down to the planet. It's a bit woo woo, um, but I'd we had, love woo woo here. We yeah, love woo woo here. <laughs> um, I'd been working at um, a council, um, a city council, uh, just outside of Manchester for mental health as a vocal, as a freelance vocal coach in 2011, and this particular day. Um, a lot of the adults who were like young adults would come in with carers or they'd come in on their own and there was a group of say 15 students you know um, who were suffering with mental health and each week for two hours I would take along some music sheets and some songs and we'd sing along as a group for the first hour and the second hour we'd do poems and drawing and it was very a creative session And this particular week, one of the songs that we sang was by Jimmy Cliff, I Can See Clearly Now the Rain Has Gone. And I am NLP trained. And for those who don't know, it's neuro-linguistic programming. So I can spot 
the energy of a room moving, you know, the bodies were rocking forward. There was big smiles on the faces that I'd never really seen before. Yeah. And one particular girl was saying again, again, can we do it again? Can we do it again? And I was like, of course we can do it again. And we ended up singing this song three times. Oh, and it was wow. only when I got home that day and, you know, thinking about this now, it, it seems really logical. But at the time we weren't listening to enough positive lyrical lyrically music um with the right words and i can see clearly now the rain has gone's very hopeful song and yeah. when i got home i was like right this is it and from that day forward i never ever sang as much as i could do or write never would write a negative a negative lyric in fact just to say kev as well that working with the frequencies of 432 and the nine solfeggio you can't write negative lyrics it's impossible from my point of view you know that if is... you write it's amazing and, 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 and just what's good because as somebody who sort of i'm not in the industry or don't know stuff so like a uh, separate to the lyrics because i'll come back to that in a minute but obviously the 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 beat and the music on the background you would listen and understand that a lot more mm. um but like if I just get in the car and I'm just driving and I put the radio on, sometimes you're not even listening, but it is actually still playing. And we know the subconscious is constantly being fed everything around you. It's all energy. It's all, you know, positive or negative and everything else. Mm -hmm. And just lately, um, it must be by design. There's like 20 or 30 top artists at the moment and their music is very dark. It's very satanic. Um, even to the point where they're dressing up and yeah. worshiping, Music and videos. It, 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 that must Absolutely. make you feel uncomfortable as a, as an artist. Um, I I do uncomfortable. Mm. Is that too strong a word? Maybe no. Um, it makes me feel sad. It makes me. But, feel but the great. one thinking is because you yeah. know you can you can see straight through it. I can't. You know I mean? Yeah, it makes me feel sad that there's a lot of that, but I'm hopeful that the music industry will change. And that's one of my big things is to be part of this new earth musical music industry for the masses that it, it's in a good vibration, you know, and there's plenty of us. There's not just me, by the way. I was going to ask that. I was going to yeah, ask that. Is... There's more and more of us really coming forward now because the timing's right. You know, I really yeah. do feel I'm seeing it more and more. I'm seeing more artists have positive lyrics because they've had enough of that. Um, you know, music videos cost an absolute fortune at that level. And you can imagine it's not it's not the artists per se. It's the actual yeah. record companies that need to be um, held accountable. Held accountable. Um, and the music the music industry um, as a whole you know it has it's not been answerable to anyone because it's so controlled by three labels at the top so as yes. an independent artist you know i'm keeping going independent yeah. you know i'm going to keep it that way aside just going back to the 90s um in the 90s, I signed a contract, you know, I was with a label or, you know, a group of guys who were based in Berlin, Germany. And that's where I was living at the time in Germany. And um, so, yeah, I became famous with that group just to say, you know, lyrically, um, it's different to what I do now, but it holds because the music, the hook of the chorus and the actual the whole recipe of it, the whole thing of it, the whole song worked. And there's many, many Max fans out there who absolutely adore what we do. And I'm very blessed for that. Um, I'm hoping that they transition over to my music, you know, in the future. Yeah, yeah and that'd be lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah because obviously yeah. they would have um, invested in you as the past artist. Mm. And I know that song um, uh, from the past. And what it is, it's high energy. It makes you feel good. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So as well, so if your current music is making you feel high vibration, high energy, that mm -hmm. can only be a positive thing, surely. Yeah, it's got to be more. You know, you were saying about the frequency having the the, the planet having a frequency, the the Schumann resonance that's, that's right. been yeah. growing and growing all the time. You know, and um, the the vibrational frequency on the planet is raising. It's just tough at the moment, from what I've read and studies. Uh, studied is that um you know we are because we are a vibrational being with with the water inside of us and we are going through this change and we've just got yeah. to stick through it and um hold in there and keep listening to great music great guided meditations um you know do the when they say do the inner work i don't yeah. know if you what it means to you to do the inner work um well do you know what i'm i'm one of these i'm like 
I appreciate people who do it, and I can understand it's got its place. For me, I'm more of a guy who sort of right, right, done, crack on. It, okay. I, I don't feel like I need to spend several years dealing with it. Okay. But I can also understand because I think sometimes it can only be a certain word by someone or someone you hear, and it triggers everything, doesn't it? it, it you know. Um, so I don't want to like knock it because I know it works for certain people. So whatever works for that person, I'm open to that. Yeah. Um, it's like. I, just quickly, I remember years ago, I had a lady come and we did this course, um, you know, and I paid several hundreds of pounds and everything else. And she wanted me to talk to myself in the mirror and, mm-hmm. uh, and all the rest. Of it. And there was, I was looking at the people in the room and it was obvious they were getting some from it. They were crying their eyes out. They were saying, oh, yeah, I'm talking to my younger self. A bit like when they say to you, write it down and then burn it and, and let it yeah. go to the angel. If it works, then it works. And I just what's the called? You just reminded me there because the great Wayne Dyer, yeah, and he, he often talked about uh, the placebo effect. Mm-hmm. And he said, "No, if, if he said if I suffered with piles, and someone said to me, crystals heal your piles, he said I'll be buying crystal chairs. He said I don't care if it's placebo or not. The but and so and I do think sometimes these." teachings it's just whatever triggers the thing that releases the past pain the past hurt the and gets you through well it, it's all to do with vibration as well and resonance isn't it because the very fact whoever's listening to this video right now and listens to drake michigan and listens to release music love energy music it's it's a connection it's a resonance you know yes. some people straight away might look at me and you or hear our voices and go that's not for me not and really that's is. so yeah. it's about attracting and connecting with the you know the that a similar vibration let's say and that's the way that this that's what i'm trying to explain this the way the earth's going so it's 100%. attracting our right tribes isn't it really the drake Michigan i think tribe. i think so and, and also at least i don't know if you've noticed this there's an old saying like um like a book or something comes into your life you know at the right time mm-hmm. and what i've done is i've looked at my life and i remember like sort of 15 years ago when I had this, like, you know, my own experience. Mm -hmm. And I used to meet people 15, 14 years ago, and some of the stuff they used to tell me, I used to laugh and I used to walk away and think, they're off the trolley. I I, I couldn't take it. Yeah. And now, 15 years later, I'm thinking, oh, my God, they were were so right. (laughs) But I wasn't. Sometimes you're not ready for certain (laughs) information Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and And, that's what I find amazing. Do you know, talking about um, my husband, David, says this all the time, you've clearly not had enough. And I'm like, what's he going on about? <laughs> what he actually means is like, you know, have people had enough yet of that dark music, of that lower vibration music, of those lyrics? Have they had enough? And we, in fact, you just reminded me, um, a, a girl I know, I've known her years, and she's a singer too. And I put out a post on social media about um, a new genre style of music that's called sad bops. Never heard okay. of it before. Yeah, no, okay. no, no. came across it. Billie Eilish and some of the other artists are doing it, and it's called sad bops. B O P S. Sad bops. And basically, you can imagine from the name of the word sad bops, it's a boppy song that's sad lyrically. It's a new gen- genre, you wow. know. Where's 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 the feel good music genre? Yeah. People um are trying to you know put out there. Anyway, uh, I put this post out, and this girl, uh, um, an old friend, I'd not I've not heard of her for years, and she commented and said, um, "Can you tell me more about this?" And and da, da, da. and I was like, "Well," um, she said, "Because sometimes I listen to Billie Eilish, and I was like, wow, she so surprised me because she's very spiritual." Okay. Yeah. But even she, so I commented and I was really careful how to, I didn't want to, you know, um, come across like, you know, like, um, you know, a vegan, like I am, I am vegan, but you know, like you must, you know, I didn't yeah. want to tell her off anything because it's not my place. It's everybody's journey. And I just said, you know, what can I just ask, you know, what is it, what is that music doing for you? Does it make you feel good? How does it, does it change your mood? What does it do? I'm just interested. And she replied back and went, actually, no. She said, I only listened to two or three songs off her album or whatever. She said, I am really conscious of that because I was saying, really, you need to be conscious of what you're listening to because it's going in. Definitely. 
it is so important. Yeah. So it surprised me. I'm just saying that when you think that um, someone is awake to this, it's still brand new. It's still new, new, new. And I think the sooner that I can get, you know, my um, online marketing strategy plan out, I can work with a student who's going to help with the social media and I can just do social media myself and get the visibility online and just get it out there. You know, life's too short and, you know, I am stepping up now. Um, I mean, one one of the things I am, and I'm sure you'll agree as well, one of the things I'm trying to do at at the moment, Elise, is Mm -hmm. I'm trying to live my life from my heart Mm -hmm. for the first time in my life instead of from my head. Lovely. So in my head, I've always lived my life as an entrepreneur, business, trying to want nice things, try, you know, and whatever. Yeah. And for the first time, I'm prepared to shove it all to one side and say, I, I'm going to live from my heart. Now, I don't know if that's going to work. I, I, I don't. I think, but, yeah. But if it does, yeah. it, it, I always say it'll be fantastic because I'll be able to say to people, I'm doing what I love. And I've been rewarded or the universe has looked after me in whichever shape or form that comes. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is, because of the experience we've had over these past 12 and 15 years, we have to believe that mm-hmm. because we've we've had so much evidence. Mm-hmm. And I know sometimes it, when we're just telling people, it probably doesn't do it justice. Um, and and because I always talk about like say, the spirit realm and it's all around us and everything else. But my, my, I lost my dad. Um, he was only 61, 62 when he passed. And um, as soon as he died, I, I always have dire straits, money for nothing, and the chicks for free. Right? <laughs> That's the song. Oh, my God, Elise, over the years, I, I went to take my daughter to school on my birthday. I got in the car. I turned the thing on, first song on the radio. On my dad's birthday, first song. It, it's like they're always around us and they're letting us know. And again, it's it's energy, it's vibrations, it's frequencies. You, and you, I, know, you know, you're talking like you, you're telling this story. That's the inner work. You know, we were oh, saying before about the inner work. If people are unsure about the inner work, that's what the inner work is. It's being aware, consciously aware of making choices that are better for us. Obviously, you can still have the, you know, the chocolate, oh, salt, caramel brownie, oh. but, you know, go and have some fruit. Or whatever and you know have more of that i suppose but um yeah. i don't know i'm just saying no i love i love how you how you've described that um because yeah. as well uh, we've just done a, a recent podcast and a lot of it, it you know was about taking on responsibility the individual because no one's going to do anything for us nobody's going to promote you better than you do you know what i mean yeah. nobody's going to be as passionate a, 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 as anything um and that also if you want something in life you've got to go after it you know what I mean? With, what, and- what do you do? I've got a question for you, Kev. What do you do if you are unsure of who you are? Because remember, you know, from a very young age, we have our generation anyway, um, have been um, suppressed of who we are, what we know, our schooling, you know, in not individually um, tapped into. I'm very creative. Yeah. Uh, I was great at sports at school, but academically I was like, now nah, you've lost me. So my subjects yeah. were art, um, music and sport you know, and I got yeah. by that way. Um, you know, so what does someone do um, to do that inner work? What would you... I mean, I, 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 I can only assume it's it's different for everyone. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a firm believer for myself personally, because I went through this massive spiritual awakening. I do look at the world differently now than I used to. It's like looking at things through a new set yeah. of glasses. So when, whenever anything happens, whether it's good or bad, I just don't, I have no attachment to anything. So when I look at my past, I have no attachment to my childhood. I have no attachment to my parents. And as, as, and as, and I don't mean this in a horrible, I even have no attachment to my partner, to my kids. And I, I look at it like we come into this world with nothing and we leave with nothing. And everything why we're here is just a, a collage of experiences and it's a mashup of emotions and feelings and, and experiences. And what we need to do is we need to take all that on board and look at it. So whenever anything happens in my life now, I'm trying to step back and look at everything from a third party perspective. And something what popped in my head then is, and I know it like, again, cause I'm not biblical and I'm not religious. But if you looked at every situation in your life as in like as a question like, well, what would Jesus do? Or what would Muhammad do? 
or what would Gandhi do? Or, you know, these people, these giants of the past. So I try, I'm trying to approach situations in my life of how would you approach this if you were wise and if you understood everything else? Yeah. And then when you do learn about everything is frequency, we don't really die. We're a spirit in a meat suit. We're, you know, and all these amazing things. Then you can look at life differently. Uh, and then when you start to think, I can create my own life. You don't have to live a life that you've been programmed. You yeah. can create your life. Um, so that's that's sort of where I'm at. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually as well, because in the next couple of weeks, I've got a medium coming on. I'm, I'm interested to have a chat with her. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really good because obviously I'm passionate in that subject, and she's, but she's out there doing it. Now, yeah. I'd, obviously, that doesn't resonate with me, but, you know, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see. Um, but I, I watched one of her podcasts from about two years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm interested to speak to her because in two years in spirituality is a long time. Um, so much can happen. Mm -hmm. And one of the things where I was, so like 15 years ago when I sort of started, you know, having all these experiences and giving people mediumship readings and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. I thought that was the be all and end all. And I thought that was important. And as much as I love it, which I do, I actually don't even find I, it's almost like that's like level one. It just keeps opening up and getting like, like you start to understand, oh my God, there's so much more what we don't understand. And for me, when you start realizing like there's no past, there's no future, everything is now. Mm. that's why you have to live in the now when you realize everything's energy light frequencies it, so i have all this knowledge and everything and it, so it just makes me look at life from a completely different angle um now some people are not going to be ready you know that's just going to say oh, i can't take none of that mm. but that's just where i'm at at the moment yeah um and and you know we'll see what happens in the future but that's the way i'm trying to get through everything yeah it's great Love it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so let's get back to yourself. I want to throw yeah. throw another question at you. Okay. Um, and that is your journey from burnout to empowerment. We know, I know personally it's incredibly inspiring, but the listeners, this will be the first time they mm -hmm. might have heard it. So have you? how have you incorporated those experiences into your music? And what message do you have to our listeners what they can take away from it? So A Journey to Love Energy is my uh, new book, my first book. Oh, you've got a book? Yes. So for the past two years, I've been deeply writing a book now and again, and um, the final edits went to the editor just the other week. So, yeah, I'm doing the front cover and the back cover and all that creative stuff. So, yeah, I love it. Oh. Um I was going to, I did write some notes on this actually, because I know it was really important. So, um, so it shares the journey of my musical, of my musical history, how I started, why I started and what it does for me. Um, but it's a peek into my personal growth and invites readers to explore their own journey of self-discovery and love energy. What that actually means is that in the book, it's a um, self, it's a reflection book. So there's room to write notes. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I know. It's very clever. There's photographs in there for when I was a baby. Um, there's photographs in there of me singing. It sh I share information also about um, working within the music industry and how I got burnout in the 90s and how yes. I didn't sing for a good 10 years because my mind was telling me I wasn't good yeah, enough. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I had a real breakdown of um, not being able to sing. And the, the story of how that unfolds and how I got to sing again. And believe it or not, I actually got to sing again in the Kathmandu Valley, Valley in Nepal. So you need to read the book. <laughs> yes, definitely. That'll be on my uh, on my wish list there. I shall, uh, I shall be looking for a copy of that. Yeah. Oh, that'll be very interesting. And, and I've, yeah. only, uh, I've only heard you talk briefly about um, your visit to Nepal. Yeah. Um, it's somewhere I've never been. But I believe, was that a very magical time for you? Did that, tra did that, was that a big. It was transformational. It was needed. And just six months before that, I'd sold everything. So, you know, you were, you know, you were talking about things not releasing magical. the leg. Yeah. Yeah. I sold, I sold my house. Oh. I sold my car. 
I sold all my valuables and I went off and um, did a bit of touring of the world, just a little bit. Wow. Yeah, so I went to Nepal with my husband, David, and we did voluntary work in the Kathmandu Valley. We first started off in a monastery in uh, Kathmandu, and then we ended up in the valley with a family of nine working for a school. And I taught taught music and um it was transformational because it was around that time there i was asking the question you know i really want to sing again i was so miserable without it and um, but i was stuck was really stuck for quite a few years even though i was freelance vocal coaching for other people when it came to myself i was like oh something's not right um so i just reached out the way that I do, I always, this is really weird. I always used to just throw my arms in the air, a bit like the Vitruvian man I was talking about before and yeah. just call it pray or just ask my high self or, you know, of the highest order and um, just for feedback really and, and, and guidance. Um, and that's what took me really to Kathmandu. And then when I came back in January of 2013, I went straight into the recording studio to start my Love Energy album and the rest is wow. history. Well, I mean, the thing is, uh, these these kind of experiences, Elise, I mean, some people, they go through the whole life, they never get to do it. Some people are, are too scared to, you know, to risk it all. And um, yeah. so to hear of people who have sort of done it, do you know what I mean? You've been there and gone. It, it, it's so amazing to read or listen to. Mm -hmm. um, it's so inspiring. And there's two things that I want, well, there's three things I want to bring to you, uh, uh, ask you about as well now. Um, one, when you've been with your husband to these places, mm -hmm. can you can you feel something? Is is there um is there a special energy, or it does it feel like it's like important, like in in Nepal, for example? Yeah, you know when you've visited these places around the world and that it, it's like because I tell you for why, and it, it leads into the next question. Just recently, and I don't know why, I keep getting like sort of synchronicity things about uh, uh, barley. No, I've never been to Bali or nothing like that, but I believe it's also a very mm. spiritual or high frequency ley line kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if you've ever experienced or been to any of these magical sites mm -hmm. and felt, you know, something. Yeah, yeah. Um, regarding um, a, a, a memory that I have is in um, Peru. So me and David, my husband, we've been married 16 years this May. And in 2008, we got married by a shaman, Shaman Francisco in Peru. And as we drove, so we, we flew from uh, Manchester to Lima, Lima to Cusco. And as we arrived in the taxi at the courtyard of our hotel, as the taxi pulled around the corner, a little tear dropped down David's face and he said, I feel like I've come home. And um, that was very significant. Yeah. We dropped our bags off. Um, we went to uh, the local restaurant, just, you know, a little shack place uh, for some food because we were hungry. And we both sat there. And I remember looking over at the block of apartments right across the road. And David's story is that at that moment, just before I'd looked up, he remembered an old past life that we'd had together and we'd lived in the block of wow. flats. Very woo woo, I know. And as I looked over, I said to him, we used to live over there. I don't know where that's come from. And he's like, yep. And I was like, you were the male, you were the female, I was the male in that relationship. It was like, wow, proper crazy. And you left me. Um, so we, we've been working on um healing and we we feel like we've done it because we're very very close um we feel you know we've worked on that past life trauma because we just don't talk about it anymore we don't need to so we've had some things to clear so that would be yeah. an incident of where that yeah, would definitely. make sense but going back to what you said about ley lines and the energy grid of the planet so we were talking earlier before about the planet having this frequency of the human resonance is that I understand it and I believe that there's been this grid of ley lines or like an energetic grid with different node points, you know, the right. ley lines, yeah. and the points on them. And, and if you really wanted to go further, then within those points would be churches significantly on those points and like this grid. And that grid has been altered 
um it's been prison like really to be on this planet and it's that that's changing the frequency and it's now changing for us all to be in a higher state a higher um mood let's say a better mood um to clear all this karma and lower energy and we're going to raise our vibrational frequency well love this love this <laughs> and now i'm going to throw something at you now now we can um <laughs> I can edit and cut this out after if um, if it doesn't okay. fit in or it's wrong or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to throw it out there anyway because I, I mm-hmm. feel like someone's nudging me to I have to tell it, yeah? Mm-hmm. Right? So obviously, you know I'm obviously spiritual and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Right? So again, so first of all, can I just ask Elise, right, is, is your father in spirit? My biological father is in America. My dad... He was my stepfather for 42 years. He passed five Right, well, let, let me just, let me just, uh, don't tell me nothing okay. because, okay, I'll tell you for why. Because I feel like I've got your dad with me. Yay. Right. Yes. Now, now this is what obviously um, the interpretation. Uh, there's, I, I already know the message what he's told me to tell you, no. right? Um, but I don't understand why he showed me a certain thing, but it must mean something where I'll have to get to the bottom of, or it might mean something to you. Okay. Right. So Freddie Mercury, right, yes. did an album, and I think it's called something like Induendo mm. or something like that. And he, in it, he's wearing a clown um, leotard. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm trying to understand why is showing like that right okay now the thing is though what he's also showing me is he was juggling and what he said was she's juggling too many balls oh right and he said she needs to concentrate on one or two things and stop juggling so so to be honest before we've had this it's it's almost as someone's telling me you're doing too much you've got too many things on the go and you need to narrow it down to one or two things Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was the actual message. What I know was he wanted to come through, mm-hmm. um, and obviously, if I feel anything else, I, 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 but oh, it's it's coming through like a feeling of your dad. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay. Harry's my dad. He is my dad, and he always yeah. comes through that way. And he's my dad. He's my dad. Right. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so I just wanted to throw that in there because that was a little message. Let me throw something else at you. Okay. Um, and that is. With the rise of the digital platforms, Mm -hmm. independent artists have more opportunities than ever before. And I think we can all agree with that. Mm -hmm. So how do you navigate the challenges? Because we're old school, if you like, we're a different generation, aren't we? Mm -hmm. How do you navigate the challenges of being an independent artist while staying true to your creative vision? Ooh, great question. And, and, and th- th- that, it's important as well to ask that because I can, under- I can understand and I have sympathy mm-hmm. where some people, they want to get somewhere so they end up not selling the soul but, all, but all, all, in a way selling the soul. They come away from what they're truly. And I've had that with this platform. I, you know, mm-hmm. I've, I've, I got pulled in a direction it shouldn't have been. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you if you. Yeah, I want to that for me. <laughs> what a great, great question. Um, I think it's really important to have um, a vision of know why you're doing it. You, your why, you know. Yes. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Um, possibly journal. Um, have the right support around you. So have the right people who believe in you. You know, David said a thing to me years ago. He said, and I thought it was quite sweet at the time because I'd lost, lost, because I'd been through that, you know, what we said, a journey to love energy. I'd lost who I was. I wasn't even liking myself, not not even loving, not even liking, never mind loving. Um, so I get it. And so David said to me, I'll love you until you love yourself. So I'll do it first. I'll show you how to love yourself. Because oh, he's, yeah. he's got it sorted, right? He, he loves yeah. himself. Not in a crazy modest No, he just gets it, he understands it, doesn't he? No, he just gets it. It's very natural to him. And I think if I can just say for women on the planet, and it's not speaking for all women, but, you know, I know men have had a tough time, but women have had it really, really tough, you know. We've had to, um, people have idolised a figure, let's say, that, you know, he's six foot tall and weighs about 
eight stone or whatever. And I'm just saying, just putting it out there. Yeah. That's that's not that's not how we're all made, by the way. But when you're no. a young child, when you're a young kid, young girl, and you you you're idolizing that, you think that all oh, this is not correct. The wide hips and the the bigger thighs and the you know that's yeah. all I'm saying. So yeah, it, it's um yeah, it's been it's been tough really. It's been really really do, tough. Do you do you yeah. think it's hard, harder today for the youth or 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 easier because? Mm. Although we have all this um, where you can get the, you know, across the world, you can, you know, you can send a message or a, a WhatsApp or whatever, it's across the world. Mm -hmm. But the, the other side of that is it's like the competition and I don't know, I, I yeah, don't know if the kids have got it easier today or harder. Yeah, social media has got a lot to answer for because you have to be really careful because you can get um, comparison-itis. So where you, in, you know, as an artist, as an independent artist, I can look at the music industry artists, look at their fancy music videos and go, oh, God. But you have to remain true to yourself. So you have to bring it back in and keep focused and know that what you're creating is the right thing for the, the greater whole. You know, you have to know what your mission is. You have to know what your why is for you. What resonates with you? Do you like, you know, creating? Uh, do you like drawing? You know, just fundamentals, really. What what you're good at? What you're passionate about, really? Yeah. And, and not many people actually do. But most people go through the whole life doing what they think they have to do to get I by. I and and because I I often I I actually said in um in a, a a video that I did not so long back about like I was showing people how to do a vision board and manifest, mm -hmm. and one of the things I said was if I could speak to my younger self, I would go and take a week or two weeks off work, lock myself away in a room, and say, Kev, what what do you really want? Yeah, and because I'm forty six now and I don't think I've ever in my life stopped and thought, what do I really want? And mm -hmm. like, because what you really want is not usually what you're doing. Yeah. And, and, and it's such a shame because the way I'm looking at it as well as I get older is if we only have one crack at this, I don't want to waste it doing what I think I have to do. Mm. I'd, ra I'd rather live on a, on a tuppence, if you like, mm. doing what I want to do. Yeah, it's tough though. It's, it's tough. a tough choice. The easier choice. I mean, for years I worked at my mum's cafe do my mum's cafe and it, it was killing me inside because it wasn't where I wanted to be but it was like the universe is like no you need to so I was always working you know I was getting up at half past five in the morning to open the cafe at half six you know and I just longed for the day that I I was able to do this music and here I am you know I'm, I'm doing it I'm I'm out there so I have got um, a few events that I'm going to oh, um come on. yeah yeah share so, uh, they are up north um so we've got um We've got Maudsley, I think that's on the 2nd of March. Um, that's yeah. run by All Our Love Events, you know, with Jen. Yeah. Um, and then on the 9th and 10th of March, I'm in Middleton at the Masonic Hall there. There's another wellbeing um, centre. If you am speaking too fast, I do apologise. No, no, um, but it'd be all on my website, elisemusic.com, um, the events. And then there's another one at Holland Park, I think it is. I've not been to Morsley or Holland Park yet, so that's going to be interesting. So I thought what I would do, because I still do my Max, I still do my 90s music, and I've got some shows this year booked already with my rapper Twitch, and we'll be getting on a plane over to um, the first one will be Austria on the 25th of May this year, which is going to be awesome. It's an open air festival. And, you know, you're looking about 10, 10, 20,000 in the audience. It's big audiences, you know. So going from like Stockport from the uh, Rosemary Douglas event the other weekend, there was like, I don't know, what a few hundred people um, going from that event to Stockport and then following mum's being in, I don't know, Stockholm, Sweden. It's quite a contrast. But yeah. I do it because I'm dedicated to to music and getting me out there and you're always training you're always meeting new people it was quite interesting because when I was singing the love energy at the Stockport event a few weeks ago in the foyer you know a few people walked away and maybe they were going to workshops or maybe they just didn't resonate with it and you know my old younger self would have been really quite harmed by that because you know as create as a creative yeah. Speak yeah. for myself. I am quite sensitive, and I can take things literally. When really, 
I've learned not to. Um, so I just wish them well. And as soon as I did that, I attracted and resonated the right people who were absolutely yes. right for me. They got me, they got the music, they bought my album. Um, so I'm running, you know, two things at the moment and we're in the max project let's say with yeah. austria on the 25th of may mexico i'm going to mexico in june and i'm also going to the czech republic in june as well so these are big events i'm getting on a plane i'm going to these foreign countries and doing big shows with massive arenas and then the other side of it is this love energy music that is plodding along you know and it's doing these little venues which is and crazy isn't it I know it's yeah. great. And the transition, I hope, for the world is that the transition will be the Love Energy music will then filter into the bigger arenas because I've got that experience, yeah. you know. And just, just, just um, I don't know if you're allowed to because of um, obviously copyrights or whatever else. But, you know, like when you're singing and you've got 20,000 people in front of you, can you not oh. say to them, uh, I, everyone, jump over to, <laughs> jump over to Elise Music uh, can you not send like um like a, a WhatsApp out to twenty thousand yeah. people and listen to this? Yeah, uh, on a video at the back of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crack on with this. Yeah, I could do. I am. I can I imagine am... people. Obviously, they love what what Max did, mm -hmm. but they mm -hmm. must also love obviously the singer and then yourself. You know what I mean? Because I mean, yeah. to be fair, listen, yeah. I'm probably a, I'm, I might be a little bit biased, but from what I remember, it's when you kick in with the um. The chorus, the, the that's the bit you remember of the song, isn't it? And I'm, I'm not being disrespectful the to the hook. Yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, it's right. It's you know, going back to the people in Berlin and um, the main producer of Max, he's an amazing guy, very talented. You know, um, he knows how to write a good hit song. Let's say yes, yeah. yeah. the format. You know, and I'm I'm still learning. I'm I'm. I'm working on the lyrics, let's say, and not so much the format. So that will be a transition for me. I know it's all up there, yeah. you know. So um, I'm so excited to. Oh, um, definitely. Get this uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm sure it's only just like you said. I think the timing is right. Yeah. Um, I think and a bit, a, a bit like myself. I think what will happen is it'll just like sort of snowball. Um, and, and again, this will be. I'm sure it'll be the same. I remember once I was. I was just put my head on the pillar. And I, I often get messages or whatever just before sleep, which, you know, and, that kind of, and I remember once and um, it was almost I'd got a message, if you like, from God or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and he just said to me, he said, when it happens, he said, it'll be like a click of a finger. Yeah. He says, and you'll just wonder, how did all that happen? Mm -hmm. And and yeah, and that's so I, I sort of live by that as well. Yeah, you know I mean? because so right. I, I, I've had that experience, Kev, myself, whereas um, back in the 90s when I auditioned for Max in Berlin, I flew on a plane. I lived in a different town in Germany at the time, so I had to get on this plane to go over to Berlin. And my first interview was um, to sing one of the singles in the booth. Um, so it was a great experience. And then I came back from then and a week later they offered me the role. They said, you know, we'd like to offer it you. And I was like, wow, okay. The the, the music manager at the time, I said to him, because um, I was still working as a secretary when I was living in June, I was working for the Royal Military Police at the time. And I was like, you know, when do I give my job up? You know, you're telling me this is going to happen. So when's it going to happen? And he said, listen, he said, we're setting up interviews, photo shoots, music videos, just bear with, it's going to take a few months. He said, but I promise you, once this happens and it goes, you'll be begging me for a day off. And oh, I did, literally. And is that, for, is that what happened? Yeah, for a full 12 months. I'm sorry I didn't keep my diary from that year because oh. um, at the front of it, I wrote everywhere we'd been. And it was literally like three days in Amsterdam and um, then on to Greece for five days because we were number one in Greece. And then back home, literally did my washing, checked my post, and then off I went again for another four or five days. And it was constantly like that. I took a lot of flights that year. Well, for 18 months, it was solid. And that's oh, when I got that's... burnout 18 months after I got yeah. this really bad um, skin condition. I got uh, eczema, psoriasis. I was just caked. In, um, was that from the stress and overwork and yeah yeah it was yeah and when i realized how stressed i was um i was in amsterdam this particular we'd done some shows and the next the following morning we went to go for a photo shoot and um some interviews and um i woke up and my whole face was inflamed or my eyes my ears all around the head here was inflamed red 
so sore, like cracked skin. It was really oh. bad. And then I had really short, dark black hair at the time. And it was just covered in dandruff, you know, psoriasis. It was really bad. And so I called the tour manager and I said, I can't do the, the photo shoot today. And he thought I was having a joke, of course. And um, he came to my hotel room and was like, nah, cancelled it all. And then from there, I just needed some time out. And I think looking back, if I'd had time out from the music industry at that time, because they do work you very hard when it when it's on, it's on. There's like there's hardly any break. Um, then you know you need that break, and then you can get your second wind and off you go again. But there was never that opportunity, unfortunately. But it's all meant to be, and I'm meant to be here right now. You know, I'll, um, when when everything takes off with the self edgio and that, I'll remind you of that. <laughs> I'll say to you, Elise, slow yeah. down, give yourself a minute. Uh, and, you, and you'll be like, no, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, well, um, Kev, I, mean, I manage it more, I manage it better nowadays. You know, I manage my time. I do manage work. The only thing with me is I'm a workshop junkie, a bit like yourself. I've right. always got my head in some kind of podcast, audio, or learning capacity, whether on YouTube or yeah, find another online course. I'm a sucker for it um, because I want to know. But I feel like I'm coming to the end of that now, maybe. I don't yeah. know. This interview that I'm doing, I've done loads of these interviews with different people. It feels different this time. So I'm just going to pick your knowledge a little bit, okay. Elise. Um, because I want to, I want to bring up the concept of digital healing tones. Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because obviously it is fascinating, especially if you don't know much about it. Um, mm -hmm. So could you elaborate on how you discovered their power and their significance mm -hmm. in your musical journey? Yeah. So um, as I said at the beginning of this video, for anyone who didn't hear already, four forty hertz is the normal vibration which all music, all songs cds music is created in you know if you're going to use pro tools which is the um or cubase or um there's, there's ableton i think it's called where you physically make the music on your computer everything's made in 440 so when i discovered that lyrics really mattered in a song that was the first thing um i can't remember specifically why I think I was just on the internet one day and I came across 440 being very hard on, on the ears, ears, like the evidence, um, there was evidence to prove there's been a few few little studies people have done on 440 and how it's not great for you. And I was like, wow, this is really interesting. But I first discovered a frequency called 528 and it's a guy in America called, or I think he's a Hawaii now, he lives in Hawaii now, um, called Dr. Len Horowitz. And it's credit to him really, because he brought 528 out there um, and then obviously I discovered 432. But just going back to the 528, 528 was very significant because it's frequency five of a set of nine frequencies that I discovered later on. Um, so it really opened up the door for me. So I knew, I just knew that when I was going to create an album called The Love Energy, I knew the name. It was just it was just how it all happened. I knew it was going to be tuned to not full 40. I knew it had to be something else. Yeah. And because 528 was close to my heart because it's the first thing that I discovered rather than 432, I went with 528. But I'll just tell you a quick story on this. So when I'm at the studio, it was around 2013 where I'd gone to the studio. So what, is that 10 years ago or more? Yeah, yeah. 10, 11, 11 years, years ago, ago, yeah. Yeah, so I'd said to the producer, Alan, who's amazing, I was like, can Alan, I said, you know, all this music's created in 440. Is there any chance that you can put my album in 528? And he's like, yeah, I'll have a go at that. I'll look into it and I'll have a go because he's a bit of a genius, is Alan. So he was open to it, which I thought, great. And this particular day, he just said to me, how many songs are you going to do on this album release? I didn't have a clue at that stage. Yeah. So I'm driving home that day from the studio. And when, when spirit speaks to me, um, I get it in my right ear and they repeat it a couple of times, maybe three times. And I kept hearing the number nine, the, num the number nine. So I'm looking around the car, I'm on my own. And going, the number nine, what does that mean? Because I'd forgotten this earlier conversation yeah, yeah. with the producer. Number nine. Okay. I just said, number nine, I get it. 
I'll just take it at, at number nine. A few weeks later, I'm at this well-being event on a Sunday. I'm talking to this really um, nice hippie couple. Let's call them hippies. They were they were hippies at the time. They were um, very spir- very spiritual. You know, they were into yeah. all kinds of things. And um, I was chatting to them. And the organizer of this event came up to me and he said, "Elise, I'm sorry to interrupt." Um, is there any chance um, would you be open to singing at one of our next events? It's once a month on a Sunday. So I said, yeah. I said, next Sunday I'm at this event, but I can probably do the next. I'd look, check my diary. And we agreed. But So I turned back to this couple and I was like, and they were looking at me like this. <laughs> and I said, is everything all right? And they went, we overheard your conversation. And I was like, yeah you're a singer I was like yeah and I said I'm creating an album these are my words I'm creating an album I said that's going to be tuned to five to eight and it's going to be tuned to five to eight and this guy just looked at his wife and his mouth dropped he looked back back at me and he went you know there's eight more frequencies don't you that would make nine and I'm like no no, I didn't know that. Oh, wow. So that's where I discovered these nine solfeggios. And this this guy attuned, he was one of the first that I know of. He tuned his whole keyboard to the nine solfeggios and he created this um, healing bed with these frequency pads that went on you with all different frequencies. And we got to try it out, me and David, and it was awesome. And it was from there, thanks to this guy, that he opened me up Um knowledge wise to the fact that there was lots more different frequencies and that's how i discovered the nine solfeggio that's amazing and 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 we talk about being in the right place at the right time and people Absolutely. coming in. you know um have you ever heard of a book called the celestine prophecy yeah oh i've watched the film as well yeah have you yeah. the film doesn't really do it justice no it doesn't now yeah. and it's like oh it's missing a bit so and that's one of the one of the reasons why me and David got married in Peru in 2008 was based on that book. Right. Um, because when we first met, um, we had both both read the book years previous mm-hmm. and just knew when, when Dave, David had the thought before me about going to Peru to get married. And I agreed because it felt the right thing to do because we both read this book. It, the um, Celestine Prophecy talks about meet. This is my point: meeting people on the journey to give you a message. Yes. Is it? Yeah. I'm getting goosebumps on that. You know, when you meet yeah. someone and you don't know why, and it could be for a healing thing. You know, yeah. someone might trigger you. They might drive you absolutely yeah. crazy. But you don't know. A year later, oh, that's why I went through that. That was to clear that stuck anger energy yeah. or jealous energy, you know? And um, it's a great book, by the way. So, yeah, I, yeah. I do go off that concept, meeting people for a reason. And he, this guy was one of them because clearly that number nine would not have made any sense to me at all if it hadn't met that person. And that's a very, also as well, just bringing Dave in there, that's a very deep spiritual connection that you've got there. We are no, no. we are very spiritual as a as a unit, you know. Yeah. Um, have you ever have you ever looked at photographs of you and your wife, for example, um, or of couples? And if you notice, like if it's hip to hip or shoulder to shoulder, you'll see me and David have head to head. So we'll have right. a photo and our heads will touch. We're very um, head spacey, spiritual people we're very connected in that way and um, it's getting easier and better it's not been you know um like any marriage any friendship or any relationship you have to work at it and that's what we continue to do um in fact i asked david a really great question the other day we were driving in the car and i asked how can we make this marriage even better (laughs) what a great question yeah definitely so the mind's then searching and and this is um just a little thing for anybody watching this and listening to this right now if you can work with open questions and an open question is just going to somehow the universe or whoever the answer is going to come flooding in maybe not straight away maybe a week later or you might meet someone who gives you that answer to that question open questions are the way forward and there's a really great great question i've been asking myself um, lately and it's all to do with what signal so talking about frequencies and tone here what signal am i giving out at the moment 
Right. And how can I raise that? How can I make my signal, taking full responsibility here yeah. of my signal, how can I make that even better and higher vibrationally on a love frequency so that I attract more loving, nice, kind people into my life? You know, how? I love that. That's great. wonderful. Yeah. And, and you know what, as well, it, it, I just, I'll have to tell you, because only last night I I was watching a podcast and this gentleman, he was, he was all to do with... Um, dreams he was an expert you know on dreams yeah and he was saying you should take that you know that open question what you just said yes you should be asking that you know before you get to bed yes and apparently that's how the information can come through because yeah. you're some, you know you must so you've asked the question and then just be open to it coming in your dreams i i i did that once and um, just before bed i asked the question where will david and i live because we have aspirations, obviously, to go to America a lot for our work, but we'd like to move out of the city. So we're living in the Manchester city centre, yeah. well, a mile out of the city centre, so we're right in it. We want to go semi-rural, and we go out, some days we go out driving just to recce places and stuff, and we're like, it's not coming forward, not coming forward. And then a few years ago, I remember I did the same thing over two consecutive nights. I asked the question, where will David and I be living? And it came through three times. Like I said, I get it in my ear. And I woke up in the morning with, with the words glossop in May, glossop in May, glossop in May. And I went, I'm not living in glossop. They need to sort that bloody motorway out the M67 because it's a nightmare bottle right. there. You never come out of it once you get in there. But I just, I do like Derbyshire. I like the, right. the um, that area, you know, with the, the lovely um, little mountains and stuff. It's a beautiful part of the world, um, Derbyshire, I think. Yeah. Um, so we've been thinking of that and then we're like, no, we can't go there because a lot of our stuff is over here in the Manchester. The next night I did the same thing. And what did I get? Glossop in May, glossop in May, glossop in May. That was about nine years ago, and it's still not manifested yet. <laughs> we're not, we're not in May yet, so no. I don't know what no. May. Hey, every is. every May, every May, you'll be thinking, do I need to pack up? <laughs> yeah, I've got I've kept some empty boxes just under the stairs, just in case. I don't know, but you know, we'll see. But yeah, that's quite a, a great thing. Open questions are great, aren't they? I'm, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Um, okay. Um, uh, something I want to just ask you what's come to my mind there is, Elise. Um, do people have any misconceptions when it comes to, like, self edge Because it's only in the last 12 months I've actually even come across the word self edge mm -hmm. And this is the thing. Some people just are not aware of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then what normally happens is you, you hear something for the first time, and then you might just think, oh, I don't know what that is, or you have a misconception. Yeah. Um, do you, have you ever had to deal with that, or how do you explain that to people? Well, I do workshops on the solfeggio frequencies. So any opportunity I get at these well-being spiritual events around the UK, um, I do a workshop and I explain how they work, what they look like, um, what they're called, because each frequency of the nine solfeggio is different. Um and then I do a demonstration of um, the audio. Um, just a minute each of the tone seems to work. And then people have this experience. Um, I have got a story. I've got a few stories to tell you, but I'll just give you an example. There was one lady who came in um, with a young girl. Um, I think she was early 20s and she was blind, deaf. So you can imagine she's coming into my workshop and I'm thinking, oh, my God, how am I going to deal with this? But it was fantastic experience because what happened was um, when I saw her body language with her mum, she was linking her, her mum. And um, at the end of it, I went up to to them and I said to the mum, how how do, do we know she's felt? How, how do we know? And she communicated hand to hand. So she did sign language on the hand. It was fascinating. And the young girl said, I really enjoyed it. And I could feel it through my feet. Wow. I was like the vibration. Yeah. So I learned, I learned something else. And what I also learned a lot of people who were coming into my workshops had hearing aids in. They were really interested to know what frequency would do for them. So I do give, um, 
when I start a workshop, I always say at the beginning, if for any reason these frequencies are too much for you, you know, um, or cause some people don't like a particular one, for example, they might not like, I don't know, the, the heart one, it might be giving them a bit of like, oh, I'm not keen on that. It's a bit sharp. Wow. Um okay because it's just a frequency tone, it might be too much for them, then then they are free to leave, you know, if, yeah. if it's too much for them. Yeah. But I just say to them, look, if you can sit through it, then it's going to clear that blocked energy. That's the whole point of them. Yeah. Maybe that's why they don't feel comfortable, because it's a blockage. And that's then... right. So it is uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, so I was just thinking then, when, you've, when you mentioned about the girl who was um, deaf Definitely. and blind, but yeah. the thing is with frequencies and, and tones, Mm -hmm. it's it's our bodies it's like on a cellular level the mm -hmm. cells of the whole body yeah so it, it would still work wouldn't it yeah well that goes back to dr emoto doesn't it with the water crystals yeah. on a resonance of a vibration um that's where cymatics comes yes. into play you know where you get the um the sheet of metal let's say and you put salt or some kind of powder I've on seen it this year the resonance it's called cymatic so you put the resonant frequency underneath or our speakers you, you clip it to the book to the metal board and it makes a shape that's fascinating it, I've, I've seen that and it's amazing i'm like it how, how, you know how, how does it do it i didn't just... Well, I, I will be covering, um, I do touch on it a little bit on my online frequency course, um, but I will be interviewing someone this year who does know how to do that. Uh, but he tells me it's easy to do and to set up, but I'd like his guidance on that, I think, yeah. unless I YouTube it and I do one myself. But I'm interested to actually experience that myself and um, maybe show it to my online members, you know, yeah. on the course. Yeah, that'd be really um, good to watch. You've asked a question on digital healing tones and yes. I I guess for me, why I've named it digital healing tones, because one, it's digital, you know, it's it's not a sound frequency bowl or a, a tuning fork. It's not a um, physical like that you can hold in your hand. So you are you are gonna play it on your computer or on your phone with headphones on, ideally, although it doesn't have to be that way. Um the healing side of it is because I believe they do heal the body's energy system on a cellular level. So they're gonna um zap any blocked energy chakras uh, energy centers or chakras what you know they can be called there and the reason i'm calling them tones is because i have to be careful when i'm talking frequencies the terminology of frequency it's a bit more expansive than the word tone so digital healing tones really works for me as a product as a digital product to um get out there and that's why my book's called um a journey to love energy so how i go from burnout to where i am today um you know i'm actually getting younger you know ah, i am I love it. i've got i've got a, bit, a big birthday again in the in the end of april but i feel like i'm going younger so benjamin button is it, is it? <laughs> Uh, hey, sorry. Is it Benjamin Button? The, the, yeah. The, 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 you get younger. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Just, just going quickly back to the healing tones because I don't know if there's a certain tone what is um, specifically for healing, mm. but is that healing on all levels, like stress, anxiety, yeah. uh, or is it body healing, or is it just healing straight across the board? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's they're all healing. Um, for different areas. So going back to this diagram here. Yeah. So you see 174, uh, 285396. So these all go, uh, um, in fact, let me show you a better diagram that I've devised, created. So this would be better in the 12 page booklet you get with, oops, uh, sorry. Yeah. See this one here. So you see at the feet area, that's meant to be at the feet number one. Yes. So this would be, and I'll just show you there, 174 correlates to the feet, the energy center or the chakra, 174. 285 is the knees, number two. Yeah. Um, three is the root chakra, 396. Four is 417. Five, uh, so four is, uh, sorry, is the sacral. Yeah. Uh, five is the solar plexus, which is 528 frequency. Six is the heart energy chakra, and that is six three nine. Seven is the throat energy chakra at seven four one, and hertz. And then eight is the third eye of eight eight um, eight five two hertz, and then nine six three is the crown energy chakra. So the and actual tones work 
through the body upwards. Yeah. So you know the lower the the lower the the number, say number one's at the feet. Yeah, one seven four. Is that a, is that? I'm trying to describe. Is that a lower tone, and then it's like a higher pitch tone as it goes up? Yes. Yeah. Is, is that what happens? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And you know, I, my ultimate favorite, um, I use still quite a lot, is um, frequency two, which is two eight five. Oops. Yeah. See there. Yeah. And this clears all energy fields. Energy so. Fields. Um, what I did before I released this album in 2015, I went to Glastonbury, Glastonbury and did a fork tuning certification course because I wanted to know, right? I wanted to know if I'm bringing this album out, this pop album out, dance album, um, you know, I wanted to know what instruments out there, aside from, from the singing bowls, the, the, the big yeah. crystal bowls and stuff, or copper bowls. Um, so I went into fork tuning and 285 is really significant and um, it's well well used, a bit like the OM fork, fork yeah. tuning. It's like, a, you know, tuning fork. Um, and 285 clears all energy fields. So if you've got a really bad knee, for example, and you um, put 285 hertz around it, it's clearing that energy around that knee area and to fix it. And 285 is known for that. It's it's very powerful. And I, I use 285 quite a lot when um, we have noisy neighbors. I don't know if you've heard them today. I've heard no. them. And um, so we have put 285 on off, off, off the album. Well, the digital version of Spotify, yeah. whatever, or I've got them all on my phone. And I put it on a really low volume and I just leave it on overnight and me and David sleep through them. And it clears the energy within, you know, the capacity of, of the building um, quite soon. And they disappear within five or 10 minutes. Oh, my God. And some of that's just popped into my head there as well. Um, is is there any particular tone that you could probably use for, like, say, pets? Yeah, two eight five. I use for pets. So if, um, it depends what the situation is. But um, two eight five hertz. I've used a lot for barking dogs. Um, for um, it calms them down and. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Within five ten minutes. Yeah, it's it's really quick now. I I don't know. You know, you're talking before about the placebo effect. Yeah how it because the placebo effect is if you really believe something's going to happen so don't know if it's a bit of that as well yes. i believe for me my experience has been with 285 that it works on clearing dogs barking um why is this something that is it a well, i just it just popped in my head then because obviously i have a dog um but mm -hmm. and also uh, so many people resonate with their pets and mm -hmm. you know and and sometimes yeah. just calming them down making them chill and obviously their ears are more sensitive and all that kind of stuff and i was just wondering if there's a, a certain tone that would is really good for helping relax pets yeah 285 is great all around because it clears energy fields but if you wanted to play track one in a tone all the way through to track nine um then you know this this CD, which is available on my website, physical and hard. Uh, this is a hard copy, the digital versions for you to download on my website. And um, to be fair, you can get them on YouTube. You know, it's no great big deal. I'm going to be really transparent there and honest. But, you know, um, I have made them into a CD, so you get the whole nine of them. So I don't think many people are doing that. Um, and you, on the CD, you get seven minutes each of each track. So what you can do, if you've got, if you're like me and you're old school and you've got an old CD player, you can put it on two track, the 285 track, yeah. and put it on repeat, and it just goes through the night, seven minutes, seven minutes, seven minutes, and it's 285 and clears okay. um, the energy. It's actually cleared dogs barking down the street. I know it's bonkers. No, no, do you know what? <laughs> nothing. When you're on this path, Elise, you know nothing is bonkers. It, it's 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 every, every day we're sort of opening ourselves up to new ways of thinking, new ways of understanding. Um, yeah. just just simply like so, the latest buzz at the moment. I don't know if you've come across this. Is like um, light language, right? Yes. Now, I'm somebody who uh -huh. because I've not experienced it, and I so at the moment I'm like, I don't know if I get it. Okay. But I also know because I'm in this field, there's people who will do it and get it and understand what it is. It's just yeah. that I'm just not privy to that knowledge or information yet. Um, so we're learning stuff all the time. But that again, yeah. it, apparently that's a frequency that's coming down, what people are channeling or teaching or... I know I know someone who does it 
and um and i know years ago someone else used to do it and at the time it was like whoa and a very very weird thing happened to me i was in the front living room and i started speaking what i could one night i was getting ready i was packing my computer away, I was going up to bed and I started speaking what I could only explain as gobble, gobbledygook. Yeah. And I w- it was, something was coming through me and as I went up the stairs, I was like, wow, that's light language. So I don't know if I'd been watching this girl do it, yeah. that all of a sudden it kind of activated it within me and it didn't really make sense at the time. I, I liked it, I was enjoying it, but whether yeah. I would continue to do that, I don't know if it's my calling, no. but... I think anyone can do it, if, if I'm fair to say, I think, you know, if yeah. you're activated. I'm, and, oh, you're I'm, into I'm, I'm definitely someone who's like, I'm opening to listening to what everyone does. Because I, I don't have a call in front of it. But it's also like, so with this spirituality side of things, I don't, at the moment in time, mm-hmm. I don't have a call into channel. Now, I've watched people do it. And, I, and it's like, wow. But I personally, I don't like that whole idea of, moving out the way, letting someone else in. That's mm. just not the way I've always, you know, I, I just, it doesn't work. But you, and you, again, you have to be true to yourself, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that comes with time, isn't it? Of, of knowing what you like and don't like. It's like me, you know, could I, it's like now, could I go out? I've actually thought this because people were asking me at the Stop Put Mind Body Spirit the other week, where can we see more of the Love Energy music? Where can we see you sing? What pub? This woman said to me, what pub are you yeah. at? Now, 20, 30 years ago, I did the pubs and the clubs yeah. and all that. And and I've asked myself, do I really want to go back into it? I'm not, it's not my, th- I've done it. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't I feel drawn back into going out on a Friday or a Saturday night and singing in in a in a pub where people are drinking because it's not my thing and it never really was my thing drinking i'm more yeah. of a you know nowadays i drink but do you know do you not find as well because i have the exactly the same thing but with the spiritual stuff yeah. so the old atmosphere of pubs and all that that doesn't it doesn't resonate with me that i, t- I tell you for why i mm. almost feel like i'm being disrespectful mm. to the subject so mm. like you with your music you mm. will be passionate and, and you know, it means so much to you. Mm-hmm. And I'm a little bit like, and I've always said, I would rather never do another reading again in my life than do it under the wrong circumstances. So it needs, you, I, I think I hear what you're saying here. You're talking about your environment and how important it is with the people around you as well, um, who you're working with and stuff, but also your environment. And I think, do you know where I think this is going and what's just come through is that I think. Uh, might resonate with you I'm not sure but it's more digital online it's a visibility online we can reach more people than I if I go so. singing down the road to the to the Irish centre yeah. then if I was to do a live stream for example yeah how many people do you know what as well this I don't know if you've lost called this so um I like I like I at the moment on uh say Spotify right I think we we sort of touch 2,000 people a day Uh, which compared to others obviously that's not big but it's two thousand people yeah now someone put it someone said to me the other the other week and they went kev if you had two thousand people stood in front of you how would that feel so and we sort of lose that sometimes because even if you had a workshop of 50 or 100 people that's a lot of people but but so online when suddenly like we'll put this out and suddenly five six hundred people have watched it within a week that's a lot Mm -hmm. of people um, but sometimes I think we see these other figures and that people who are getting 20,000, 50,000, mm. and we're like, <laughs> but, you know, we're being a little bit hard on ourselves. I think, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's all timing, you know, what what actual message are they putting out, really, to yes. get those kind of numbers? And I think it's timing. I think, you know, the doors are opening for people like us to come through now with these messages um, to help people. That's the thing, you know, how, how can we assist humanity? in changing the planet because we've worked on our stuff and, and we're ready. Well, I, I'm talking from my own point of view. I, yeah, I'm ready yeah. to take it to the next level, whatever that might be for the highest good, you know. I, I spend training. every day, Elise, saying to the universe, what do you want me to do? <laughs> to serve you. Yeah. And that is part of your journey because when you're younger, you're like, you know, you, we sort of, we want or, you know, but Ooh, I'm at a stage yeah. in my life now where I flip that and I'm saying like, how can I serve you? That's what right. can I do for you? 
because we've worked on ourselves it's not about us anymore we're older in life aren't we and you know we're, we're ready to take it out to the masses and and step up the visibility and I'd, I'd, i would love i would love to be able to like sort of take the knowledge and information where i've gathered mm -hmm. and then 12 months later see 100 people 200 people who were all saying oh my days I wish I would have knew this 10 years ago or, yeah. you know, my whole yeah. life has changed or I've healed because I've listened to this music or my, yeah. I've manifested um, the love of my life and I didn't realise, I never looked at it. For me, that's that's the main concept of the whole thing is it's just yeah. getting people to understand you've been, you've been narrow-boated mm -hmm. and not looking at life from the full spectrum. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's great, great time oh, yeah. to be alive. I know some people might not say that, but it, it, but it is, yeah. Okay. I'll just quickly ask you this as well, because I know you've probably already touched on it for me, but I was going to say, so you know when you're listening to self edgio tones, mm -hmm. would you recommend, um, so like if you were getting meditation and mm -hmm. mindfulness, would that be a good time to be listening to it? Yeah, you can listen to it. You can listen to it, actually listen to it in the car, believe it or not, on, on a low volume, I'd recommend, and just play it in the background. But I recommend to my online course members to actually put headphones on because I think that you're going to get a more thorough, um, you know, take on it, especially if you want to work on a specific energy center. So if you want to work on the heart or the solar plexus, which is all about control, um then you would play like for, for the solar plexus which is five to eight hertz frequency you'd play that on a loop um or a guided meditation off my online course or um actually the song off the love energy album um which is called the love energy and that's track five so you're going to just constantly be throwing five to eight at that specific um energy center to clear it Okay. Oh, a big one. I've got two things to before I just wrap <laughs> this up with you. Okay. Um, so I'd like to ask you, mm -hmm. where do you see the future of Ooh. Solfeggio music heading? And what role do you hope to play in its continued evolution and popularity? Fantastic question. Um, so Solfeggio for the future, I don't think it's just going to be Solfeggio. I think there's going to be new frequencies coming in. That's oh, quite a revelation, yeah. yeah. And I think potentially I could be at the movement of that. Don't know how, but it's been said to me before because I know a lady in Holland who works predominantly with 432 at her school, her music school, and we've had some conversations and she said to me, I'm just picking up, Elise, you're going you're gonna to expand it, you know. I've had all the learning of the solfeggio, the 432, all those other frequencies I'm talking about, and who knows that this new earth as it changes in vibration. Um, we are going to be moving into a complete different resonance, a different Schumann resonance of the yeah. planet. So I don't know what that is right now. Um, so it, I'm open to anything. Um, I'm open to new frequencies coming in. I'm open to generally, you know, these solfeggios being played in schools, for example, oh, in hospitals. Yeah. And did you see there was a video the other day about... Um, in a hospital in, in America, um, and they were moving these instruments on a on a, a trolley, let's say, that were giving off frequencies. That's the future. Yes. What I would like what I would like to say is one of my dreams and wishes is to take an old church and have it completely renovated and put new lead windows in all with the fancy, you know, all the colors and everything like they used to be. And all the, the geometric shapes, the circles and all, you know, the, the ceiling heights and everything, because that's all to do with frequencies again and make them how they used to be. If we are going to go down that route of how churches really used to be as a healing center, oh, that would be beautiful. My dream. What was the second question you asked me? There was something else in the second part of that. Oh, so let me say, um, do, 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 do. the continued evolution and po the popularity of it. The popularity of um, it. Yeah, mm. it was also like, so where, where you've sort of ought to answered it um, where you think it's heading and that the oh, okay. new frequency yeah, yeah. may come in. But we started this interview yeah. with back in the 1800s and everything, the government mm -hmm. and that altered the frequency. Mm -hmm. But maybe the change, the way the world's going, maybe somebody might step to the plate and say, we're going to change, change it back. Or we're going to change it to a new frequency, a frequency what's um, of healing, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, peacefulness, 
instead mm. of a frequency of fear because i think we are on a frequency of low yeah. vibration and fear. yes yeah i agree um, so that'd be nice. i wanted to, a couple of things so um if if anybody's seeing i don't know if you as well look out for this so if you're seeing um the numbers five 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 oh lot, yes uh-huh so apparently this is massive change is imminent in your life so get yourself you know buckle up get the seat belts because anyone who's seeing 555 at the moment um and i even saw something that i know someone in america and they were sort of this light worker and they said the frequency that's being put out at the moment to people who are awake mm -hmm. is 555 so if you're starting to see it and do, just get ready because it's coming so that, that i just thought to tell you that yeah, and then also the, the the question what i wanted to do was if it was our last day on earth mm -hmm. And you had to get a piece of paper and a pen and you had to leave a message for the new people who were coming to earth. How would you sum up or what advice could you give them? Wow. Put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, you didn't prep me for this one. Um, how, what would I leave them? Oh, I know straight away, I'd leave them this. I love it. <laughs> a copy. Leave them the albums. I, I, what a fantastic thing to leave, a legacy. I love yeah. that. I, do you know, you remember back in the day when people used to do time capsules yes. and they'd put a box together and put it in the ground somewhere? Yes. Yeah. Got me thinking now, Kev. Why not? Why not? Hey, put it in a capsule and send it to Mars with all yeah. the others. <laughs> Elise, it's been absolutely wonderful speaking to you. I'm so glad we've had, we've had, we've had this opportunity to speak all about yourself, Edgio, and your music. Thank because you. we know there's so much more to you as well. But this mm. is a major driving force in your life at the moment. And yeah. um, we're going to do everything we can here at the Drake Michigan platform oh, to get it you. out there. We're going to be telling everybody and promoting it for you. And I just look forward to watching your, your journey and the grow. Um, yeah, and, awesome. and seeing it because yeah well i was in i was in your studio last year which is great by the way it's a great little studio if anyone wants to uh get down there and get interviewed yeah. by the lovely kev then you, you know you've got to do it but um i was singing and stuff and yeah. um yeah it was great it was a great day um great to see you set up and everything and, and you know just hats off to you and i wish you all the best and i'm sure you, saying back at you it's going to be absolutely amazing platform for for people like me really you've given me a great platform and opportunity to share this wonderful work that i'm doing and i can't wait to you know get it out there so Absolutely. thank you thanks for having me no, thank, thank you. you thank you